Swiggity sorty, let's get that booty. Hey, what's good with y'all today, bro? It is the Slim Cogcast, and I am Slim Cognito. And uh, first things first, and you know it ain't the worst. I gotta tell y'all what we've been watching this week, alright? So let's just jump right in with no fuss, no muss. It's ready to bust. Bruh. So, Shingeki no Kyojin, aka Attack on Titan. The latest episode has been huge. Some things have been revealed. Last week's reveal was already insane. And now we're getting even more lore dump. And some like filling in the gaps of what's been going on. The, the main thing that I had to realize, like I said last week, was like the last time we've seen this person was years ago that we've seen this person move and talk. Like, period. Years ago. And here we are now. They pretty much ran the whole conversation. This entire episode was kind of about them and what they were going through while they were away i'm trying my best not to spoil for those that know you know and congratulations because i really want to talk about this and i want to see the finale drop we're gonna to have to talk about this um but that being said yo that reveal at the end got me hype i don't know what to say or do but that looks great i can't wait for it man i can't wait i'm trying to tell you i can't wait it's looking delicious i i i my boy my boy so so anyway 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 um i'm gonna I'm move forward and, and just go ahead and talk about uh the season finale of demon slayer uh since it's been a week we gotta get it out of the way bro to be honest with you all right nezuko keeps leveling up all right we we, we gotta talk about it we gotta talk about it all right so here go the spoilers if y'all don't want spoilers for demon slayer go ahead and skip ahead into the pot but it's getting crazy Nezuko kicking ass the way she do in her specific demon like capabilities being so damn strong I'm starting to think that her getting regular sleep instead of just eating humans is making her stronger way faster and the demons don't know so it's like maybe sleep is way better than just eating humans because her regeneration speed is way more, like, way more frequent, way faster. Her fighting and everything else, like, is just better. She's stronger than most of them. Like, it's crazy. And she keeps getting stronger, like, by the episode. I can't wait to see more. My boy, even though he went through a lot in that last fight, he got his fingers broken and all type of shit, but he still held on and kept going. <laughs> and he hit a new like level of power tanjiro just hit a new form and his hair started to move like flames and the pupils in his eyes disappeared bro somebody tell me what that is because i don't know what that is and whatever it is that his daddy had gave him whatever that is it's some crazy shit is what it is bro let me tell you something all right it's insane tanjiro having what's it called sun breathing which is supposed to be able to do all the art forms and now he knows how to mix the forms like i just i just don't know what to think i just don't know what to think so anywho's yeah first things first let's just get it out of the way i'm glad that uh uzi san is not dead that's my favorite ashira i'm glad he ain't dead he lost a hand but i don't think that's the end of him and i can't wait to see more and I'm glad that Nezuko was able to neutralize that poison and get rid of it. So I'm not really sure what that power consists of. But I feel like Nezuko could probably help the master. So that would be pretty fucking sick. I can't wait to see it. Next thing though. Bruh. Moving on from Demon Slayer because ain't much else to say. Our boys are getting stronger and they're doing great. And I love to see them work together. Um next thing oh next thing all right so we've already covered shingeki no kyojin and we didn't want to spoil too much and we talked about demon slayer with full spoilers let's get on this euphoria y'all so first things first I, I gotta address it i gotta address it and if we had a guest on the podcast i'd be able to like flesh out these conversations a little more but right now we just gotta get to the facts and then move forward and straight up, man, let me tell you, I always wondered what really happened between Nate and his father. Because 
Nate has been in complete denial of the masculinity of his father. And it's clear that Kyle Jacobs' like, personality is just that whatever he's able to conquer, he wants to do more than just conquer it. He wants to completely conquer it. And he can't help himself to the point where it ruined his kids. And I had my suspicions. I had my suspicions about this shit. And it's like, you, you have this whole play going down with Lexi, right? Which is amazing, by the way, an amazing performance. That whole number with Bonnie Tyler, I Need a Hero, oh my God, so good. That is Bonnie Tyler, right? I think it's Bonnie Tyler. Um, but it was so good, and I was enjoying myself. It was like I was watching Glee, but with a budget, <laughs> and you know some and 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 also a little bit of drag show you know what I'm saying um cinema sprinkled in there like it, it was good bro i was enjoying myself the whole time and the fact that ethan did the whole thing like that made him way more interesting and way more like like i'm glad to see ethan really do some stuff because his story is just as important as Cat's story, and I see nothing but people on the Twitter timeline complaining about Cat and how little her story is this and that. But uh, Ethan is a character as well, and he's a person. And I like the way they've been carrying him too. So yeah, both of those characters, I'm still sticking with them, and I'm, I'm interested in how it's going because this is a story that's not often told. And I'm, I'm with this now the fact that here's the thing that nobody noticed right here on the pod first thing said first and foremost that nobody noticed okay when Nate stormed out of the theater he did not say oh my god I hate them for telling my secret he did not say oh my god I hate them for making fun of me he said how could they do that it's so homophobic do you see? Do you see? He's coming to grips with who he is. And I don't think anything is going to force him to be a man more than being with Cassie. I don't care what y'all say. Because Cassie is a woman of a woman of a woman of a woman. She is femininity to the extreme. So much to the extreme that it's self-destructive. And when a person is that effeminate, who they are with, are going to have to feel that that types of feminine energy makes an opposite person a person that's opposed to them feel more masculine and they feel the need to be more masculine nothing makes a man feel like a man than being in the vicinity of pure femininity and it makes them want to rise to the occasion to be what they need out of them and cassie is going to force him to feel that way like crazy you understand so right now he's at an impasse is the reason i say this he's he's at a crossroads right now he's like you either become the man that you have to be to be what cassie needs or you're gonna have to embrace those thoughts that you keep running away from and that's exact that's this is some a1 grade a top of the line 110 percent good ass writing because right now, in order to become the man that Cassie needs out of Nate, he's going to have to keep up the facade and charade of him denying his own sexuality and unresolved traumas of his childhood, which has also been revealed. Now, the reason I can go into so much detail about Nate is because there's, there's certain parts of him that make a lot of sense and is very relatable to real life and it makes so much sense okay so that's the reason i could talk about nate for and his uh like like character arc for hours but i can also talk about the character arc of 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 of, of a rue for hours so that makes sense as well because of the relatability in it and when you have a family that you know didn't know how to support you in your low point but then also they grow frustrated and then they say they want to give up and all of this. Like it's 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 very relatable because 
when Rue's going through what she's going through, what she expects is for something to fill the void or to fix it or someone that she loves to be able to tell her what she needs to hear. But the problem is that the pain is ever present and no one knows how to deal with that because the only person that can deal with it is her. So you have to charge her with the responsibility of, hey, look at what you're doing to us while you're hurting, you're causing more hurt. So the purpose of that is what makes a human learn to tough it out so that they won't bleed on everyone else, you know? And that's the biggest thing that, that drives me crazy is because on the opposite end of the spectrum, what that's what makes her so relatable is because I've I've seen the opposite end of the spectrum and where you where you keep quiet about your traumas and the things you're going through in order to make sure that you don't cause any extra stress or problems for others, you know? And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of kids that can relate to that, where they had their problems and issues growing up in adolescence, but they kept it to themselves, so they internalized all of the pain because of the fact that they didn't want to bother their parents with it, especially if you grew up with parents in poverty. So it makes sense. And um, yeah, it's all, the only thing that's not relatable in this whole TV show is that everybody's living well off like like living really good <laughs> like their parents got them set up really fucking good and the only person that's really like struggling struggling is Fesco and Ashtray now speaking of Fesco and Ashtray damn it listen to me Fez if you don't get your ass either out that house and in that chair for that play or Take care of that asshole that's been cooperating with the police and get these people out your house. Get them out your house because I don't know about that girl. She seemed to be in your corner at the same time. It don't look like she helping them. And then, uh, she could have been told y'all put y'all on this, you know what I'm saying? Because she done talked the dude already. And then ask her, yo, dude, I don't know what he finna do, but that's my boy. And I know he ready to do something crazy. I don't know if that knife is finna go in that phone or if it's finna go in that main throat. And he don't need to go in his throat to be honest because they need him to not, if if, if old boy died in there, then that's gonna raise suspicion. We don't need that. But we're gonna have to find out. That'd be interesting too, either way. But boy, see how this game get crazy out of nowhere? It get crazy out of nowhere, man. And when, and, and when somebody got a weak spine and they can be bought, Especially by the law because they scared to go to jail. Oh, man You have no idea what type of dogs you're laying down until them fleas get on you, man So Can't wait to see what happens out of that. But man, my boy Fez, man, y'all better not. I swear, man, Lexi Lexi deserves some love, man. She been ignored, neglected Second fiddle Treated like lesser Always like, you know what I'm saying, thrown them at the side and not considered Lexi need W's, and this play is her first W, and I want to see her get a couple more, and Fesco is the perfect W for her, she needs that. He's from an opposite world that could really, really add more to her world, you know what I mean? Because she's a shelter, you know, very innocent, good girl. It's, it's, man, this love shit is not simple, but when it comes to the way this shit written, oh my god, it's so good. So anyway, um, next thing, oh my god, bro. Um, who am I forgetting about? What character am I forgetting about, y'all? Because Cat, man, look, I can say what I had to say about Cat in the last episode of the podcast, I think. But I think we need to address, we need to address the fact that Elliot has not been, he ain't been addressed proper. Like, somebody need to get on his case. Well, he been addressed a little proper. Because when she smacked him side the head and told him, fuck you, that, that was pretty good. And it's and it's a shame. I, I feel I feel like it's it's kind of a shame that the only time that Rue was able to tell them the truth about themselves was when she was under, you know, a lot of stress and under the influence. Now, still though, I'm not comfortable with her still meeting eye contact with Jules in the theater because Jules need to understand that her and her sexual endeavors has caused oh so much pain and hurt for people. And I, that's that's the biggest thing about that teenage shit is like people learning just how much pain that they could cause and if they give a damn, you know, 
And if you really lived your life and done things in your high school years, usually if you learn from those mistakes, it'll make you a better person in your adult years. Because the pain you can cause, sometimes a lot of us uh, have to learn firsthand that physical scars, like I always say, is temporary, but mental scars and emotional ones sometimes are permanent. And you have to do what you can to, like, you know, mitigate this shit sometimes because. Us as humans, we do and say things that we don't mean in the heat of the moment, and it ends up being consequences that can cost us for years at a time. Like, for example, Cassie ending up being infatuated and falling in love by someone who is a master at getting people to fall for him. It's not completely her fault, but she has to find a way to find she, she needs to eventually realize that as a woman she has a responsibility of who she gives her hard time and affection to and just giving it to everyone is going to cause all types of problems for her and her friends and loved ones it's causing all type of strife like she's literally it's it look at look at what's going on like look at what's going on this shit happens this stuff happens okay as a, as a fella who has grown up with a teenage girl in a, the household that he has grown up in, I'm telling you this shit happens. And you need to be very aware of the fact that the only reason that we are aware of it and we see it happening so openly in the show is because these characters are written to speak about it and openly be about it. But in IRL, Oftentimes, teenagers go through this stuff and then they keep it secret and then they act like it's a uh, part of life and it's normal and it doesn't have to be, but they choose it to be so. I'm telling you, man, this is good. Next thing, though. All right, so last thing I want to address uh, about this Euphoria episode is just the fact that the, f the fact that Lexi ran through with this whole play and she's worried about if it will piss somebody off but that truth needs to be said because all of this like you can literally pull a thread from all of this shit that's going on just by exposing one lie and then another and then another it's just people lying to one another and doing shit behind each other's backs or secrets that's being kept you know what i mean from whether it's Cal to Nate Jacobs, whether it's Cassie and Nate, whether it's Maddie and the stuff that's been going on between Nate and what she know about her dad, whether it's Rue and her addictions and the things she's been doing behind closed doors, or whether it's the secret that Mouse was murdered by Ashtray, or whether it's the secrets that 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 Jules is holding about Cal Jacobs, or whether it's it's just secrets on secrets on secrets and them shits gonna come to life eventually and the fastest thing that got destroyed was when there was truth being had and that's when Elliot was telling them the truth about he just often said yeah I got a crush on Ruth yeah I would fuck both of you like he like he, because he was honest about it it all just boom blew up immediately and see that's the thing about truth is Truth undoes what lies create. And when you let lies go on for so long and it's something that big, it's vulnerable to that truth, you know? So when someone says loose lips sink ships, be wary of that mother because them the type of people that will f you over just to keep a lie going. But if you tell truth from the front, from the jump, then you can build in truth rather than in lies. If you build in lies, one truth will crumble all this shit and blow it up. But if you build in truth, not a lie nor any type of bullshit can crumble it. That's what it takes. That's the lesson to be learned. That's part of the growth of the human pipeline into adulthood. You gotta know that truth hurts. But if you rip that band-aid off early, then it'll be just a small scratch to heal before it's an entire surgery and cancer removal needed down the line. Do you get what I'm saying with this analogy? I hope it, I hope it's hitting right now because I feel like I'm spitting, but I'm not sure. It's up to those that listen to be able to discern. So, so I'm gonna let y'all decide. But anywho, let's move forward. Please let me know if y'all are a listener, you know what I mean? Just, just, just let me know, like leave it a like on the Twitter, you know what I'm saying? Or, or pop up in the stream, let me know that this podcast is not falling on deaf ears because I do this every week and it ain't just for me. 
You know, I, I, I want to have some conversation about this or some type of forum about the stuff that we watch and play. So, yeah, give me some feedback. And if y'all know somebody that's good at, you know, conversation and talking points and things like that, let me know. That they can actually, you know, keep up and 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 keep up with the, the fun and the energy and, and the joking and the comedy, you know, sense of humor. If y'all know somebody and they're free and they actually want to make a podcast, or if they already have a podcast that I can guest star on theirs, let me know, please, because I want to expand this. I'm I'm a I'm gonna start putting in some extra overtime. I know I already put in too much on the stream as is, so please don't worry. But I want to put in some extra, extra overtime to expand this podcast. And I want to talk with other people about this because I feel like it's things that need to be said, and I'm and I want some pushback or something to bounce off of, you know, to someone to bounce off of, to better sharpen, you know, these opinions and these takes. Anywho's, that's uh, I think everything that I have to say about Euphoria right now. This next episode coming next Sunday will be the season finale, and I think it's gonna be crazy. But who knows? I can't wait. But um yeah man I I can't I can't wait. <laughs> Anywho's uh first things first, let's go ahead and talk about what we've been playing this week. So this week we've been journeying through a lot of different games, honestly. And one of those this past week was we just did some fooling around, right? And we played some random retro at one point because we were having some technical difficulties uh, before the RAM got in. So we fooled around with some uh, Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, which we still haven't defeated. But good lord, are we at the hardest shit ever. And it's ridiculous. It's so difficult. It's it's so difficult. But we'll probably get to it eventually. Um, we've beaten Resident Evil Zero. And RE Zero, I'll tell you, is... Basically, like I said, it's a more challenging version of the classic RE formula for those that are familiar with the classic RE formula. So if you know old RE, this game will actually challenge you and give you more to do. Now, honestly, it does achieve that very well. Uh, the game can be punishing and it does expect you to come with your A game and know what to do. As well as it's not afraid to spend your resources and dry up all of your heals and ammo. But it does reward you as you go along and those rewards tend to be perfectly timed i can't stress this enough like i would there's been several situations in resident evil zero where i've had to get by by the skin of my teeth and just do what i can at the moment with the few bullets that i have left and when i get to the other side they will replenish all of my ammo they will replenish everything that i have clearly there's some type of adaptive difficulty thing under the hood that's going on you know that that usual thing where it's like if you go into a boss fight and you got like 20 bullets and you actually need like 25 to kill the boss they'll go ahead and let you kill it with the last bullet so yeah that was nice um if if that is the case this is me making an assumption i don't know but um if that's the case everything just fell right into place as i went along and eventually i just had to trust the game and go with the flow rather than try to prepare for everything so because of that um i'm gonna go ahead and talk about the whole item drop system and the lack of item boxes so the universal item box being a staple in the first three resident evil games by far um yeah because they haven't brought it back until seven and item boxes are a great inclusion of game design because you have to manage what you have but it's convenient that you, it's always with you as long as you can get to another save point and that's great great that's great game design since the dawn of time it was great game design now i do die I, I vibe with that but the fact that they took that out not only does that add to anxiety and make you afraid of the item management and it, you get more you know saying tense about where you're going and you get more afraid about should i explore down here you know etc and i like that it really did work and it's it's a very respectable design choice not gonna lie so much to the point where i really did respect the fact that the grapple hook ended up being just as useful as it was at the start into this next area so it's good stuff I, I i gotta i gotta applaud them 
And the callback is great because they will show it to you and you would immediately think, oh yeah, I need the grappling hook. So you go back and grab that and you bring it back. Now, here's the bad part about the items on the floor mechanic though. The only drawback about it is that it turns into a bunch of back tracking and you know item migration and you know what I'm saying extra moving around because you would like say there was a point where I wanted to move my items from one save point to another once I got to the church which is after the mansion and I wanted to migrate my items because I needed this ammo I needed these healing items and I'm gonna need these ink ribbons so as I'm migrating I noticed that I was running all the way back with every item I could hold and then running all the way back just so I could drop them at this next save point. And then I get to that save point and I do a little bit of stuff for like an hour of gameplay and then the next hour I find, and after that hour I find another save point. So I need to migrate all these items right on back and then, you know, oftentimes I would be well prepared so it would pay off but the backtracking was exacerbated because of it. it it was excuse me i didn't mean to use a five dollar word it amplified the backtracking and that's not exactly something that um most gamers would be willing to accept i don't mind backtracking honestly as long as it's for a unique purpose and the fact that i chose to backtrack for my own preference of using items etc means that i chose to do so and it paid off you know me being patient and weathering that storm however most gamers number one won't be able to deal with uh tank controls and fixed camera angles and their frustrating will probably go over the edge dealing with backtracking um because i have to consider that other people are not as tolerable as i am or as patient so it, it, it is what it is um, I've, I've had plenty of time watching others play games. I've witnessed them play certain, you know, classic games. And it can be a slog for them to have so much agency and, you know, being left to their own devices. And there's nothing uh, inherently wrong with that because even at times when I start a new game, I can get frustrated because modern games have spoiled me in a sense, the good modern games where they will give you the information you need and then they set you out and tell you to go you know and i've eventually had to adapt to that because every modern game now just tells you what to do that's the reason why i stay away from most assassin creed games that's the reason why i can't play most open world games because it's just telling you how to game rather than letting you game go over here and do this go over there and do that and Dying Light 2, on, uh, ironically, Dying Light 2 is a breath of fresh air in this sense because open world games, usually they try to pigeonhole you into what you do next, whereas Dying Light 2 is just like, bro, just, just go in and have some fun. Do a mission if you want to, kill some zombies, run from some zombies, run on some walls, jump on ledges, do what the fuck you want. And that's what I love about Dying Light 2 thus far. Uh, but yes, all in all, Resident Evil Zero, um, I, I feel it's made for those who champion and really love the classic versions of Resident Evil out of the original trilogy. And the only thing that I got to gripe about is that the item box, uh, the lack of an item box, although it being a good addition to add the difficulty and item management, which I do appreciate on the back end, it does have a bit of a con that can't be ignored but the pros can't be ignored either um also any resident evil that makes you shoot birds on tank controls and fix camera angles fuck it but um yeah next thing on the docket though uh, uh wait no not the docket my bad we ain't doing the news yet um what we've been playing this week though uh other bigger titles that we have been uh, touching is oni uh, it's a Rockstar published title made by Bungie babe, back in the day, uh, PC and PS2. I still made the dumbest decision and decided to sit up and play the PS2 version of Oni. And I don't know why I did that, but it's so dumb. And I honestly, I honestly got to tell you, man, on Oni, bro, I am not, I do not look forward to playing this shit. Now, now don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love the game. Everything in it, design-wise, like you, it has so much potential, and they're really going for some things. 
but they they made it so difficult for arbitrary reasons i don't understand like every enemy or every other enemy should be dropping a health pickup regardless the amount of damage that you take and the clunkiness of these controls and they expected it to be fair like i i just can't you, you the controls on ps2 version I'm gonna tell y'all outright, it's R1 to punch and R2 to kick. The only reason I was able to adapt to that is because of the Soul series. Then it's L1 to jump and L2 to crouch. So if you wanna do any jumping attacks, you have to L1 and then R1 or L1 and then R2, which is not comfortable. Then if you wanna do any crouching attacks, you gotta L2 and R1, L2 and then R2. So I, mm -mm. And that L2 is hold it. You got to hold it to do those attacks. You can't just press it and do it. It's not like the jump button. Really, you got to hold the jump button as well because if you want to get enough air to do a solid kick or something, then you got to hold it. It's it's just crazy. And then the other controls is just dumb. Where it's like, in order to do a somersault in the air to get extra air and do a better jump, which you don't really because the jump arc is like, it's fixed but is not fixed and it's based upon the amount of speed that you currently have it does not work i hate it the l2 to jump and then l the l1 to jump and then l2 to do a like air somersault it's dumb so in order to do a ground kick or a ground stomp on an enemy you have to press l1 l2 and then r2 oh man just thinking about it's pissed me off and and to do a grab move you have to run up on your enemy press forward and then either r1 or r2 they ask you to input moves with with like tekken design where it's like you have to crouch and then while you're getting up press a button which is hold l2 and then press an r1 or r2 in order to do your attack while you're rising from crouch these things don't work in a 3d space with these controls and this difficulty when you can't you, you don't have the combo to stagger your enemies and you can't exactly choose the damage that you want to output without risking yourself being torn down basically here's the issue i'm gonna just sum it up like this with oni it's giving you fighting game mechanics that are tuned and made and designed and conceptualized for one-on-one -on -one fights but it's throwing in three-on-one -on -one fights you have to fight mobs of up to three people at once you have to fight people who are shooting guns and coming at you you have no means of avoiding gunfire aside from a dodge roll that doesn't truly give you the iframes frames you need and hiding behind cover so it's just janky moving arounds and, and, and functions that don't really serve as the gameplay. So therefore, the odds are in the computers and the enemy AI's favor. You do not have any advantage over these enemies unless you abuse guns and whatnot, and even then those are finite. Now, it's still nice and all that the bullets are finite for the enemies as well. But it doesn't matter if you can walk into a room and there's up to two people by default and they're going to spray an entire clip in you. And then the AI is too smart. So it's not going to waste his ammo when you're not in the line of fire. So it's going to wait until they can run up on you and then they'll do what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's shooting you or just run up on you and doing a grab move or just hitting you with some type of special ability. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Anywho, rent over the hard ass fucking game. Another hard ass game that we played that I thought was gonna be relaxing. Clock. Okay, I've, you know what? I'm gonna say it too, by the way. Like, all right, I probably set myself up this way because I do play a lot of hard games, that being said, and I overcome a lot of difficult shit. But now, the, my, <laughs> the chat. My good friends and the uh, people in the chat, they 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 expect me to play some hard ass games. And that expectation sometimes gets met with me getting my ass kicked a lot. Because some games are difficult for the wrong reasons and some games are difficult for the right reasons. And when it comes to difficulty and challenge, 
that frustration that I get playing Oni does not even measure up to like it's a different type of frustration with say Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. In, Se in Sekiro and Souls games, mistakes were made because I messed up. In Oni, mistakes were made because the controllers are the controls are like incredibly unintuitive, and a lot of this game just constant, constantly ruins you, and it's unfair for the most part because it's like you, like here I am doing what I can to get through the game but there's nothing here to assist me with this like i, I like like what like what do you expect me to do here whereas you get to start from a fair square one in sekiro if you die right you get to start over from square one you're still on even ground your heels are right there for you all of that same for any souls game only in plock when you fail you're set backwards you're not set back to a point where you can try again in a fair in a fair pace or a fair stance. You are set backwards. You're not starting from square one. You're starting from negative two. And now you 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 just barely slide by an encounter in Oni, but now your next encounter is gonna be even more impossible because they're gonna spawn you with the health that you got through with. They're gonna spawn you with the amount of heals that you have, which is probably none. Because they decided that it's fair to put you in a room with a big ass turret and a whole bunch of shit. Like, and I can't think of any other way that they intended me to go through with that because I haven't been told anything. I ain't got no advice on what's the proper way to get through these encounters. So, oftentimes I find myself just running through that shit saying, fuck it. Just run. And, and, and have like eight dudes following me trying to punch my shit. So, yeah. I don't think this is difficulty in terms of challenge. This is difficulty as in this game is jank. And it ain't that well made. I'm just gonna be real with you. It's it's got a lot of potential, but it's 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 very ambitious with tools that they didn't have in order to make this a solid experience. Now, if Platinum Games got a hold of Oni, I feel like it could be a much better experience. Cause nothing I don't see any reason why these bastards could not and I mean this, every control decision in this game is so dumb. To interact with items and and, and, and and consoles, you press R3. That makes no sense. Nothing would, it wouldn't have hurt nothing in that game to put the jump button on X and put crouch on circle. It would have hurt nothing. And press L1 to use your heal. Like, it would have hurt nothing. It would have hurt nothing. So, anywho's, I'll probably like retool my controls uh, for some custom layout next time. But um, other than that, I'm tempted like every day because I don't like leaving a game incomplete. I'm tempted to like start over with the PC version. But at the same time, I don't want to replay all that shit. So we'll just have to see. I might play it offline on the PC version and catch back up. Who knows? But don't get your hopes up. That shit defeated me spiritually. I don't even like it. I, 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 do we? I, I can't. I just can't. Especially with this boss fight we're dealing with right now. So, anywho, oh, damn, it's a long rant. Y'all know I this this had to be done because it's, it's it's been a long week with some rough shit. But lastly, um, what we've been playing this week is uh, we played a little bit of Super Mario Odyssey just to fool around with it because I finally got it working and it's pretty fun. Um, it's something I've been wanting to play forever and I've been holding off and I've been seeing people play it and I'm seeing clips. I just wanted to play it so bad. Like it looks so good and I've avoided spoilers for a long ass time. And it's everything that I thought it was. It lives up to it. The controls are tight. Everything is right there for you. Uh, I can see like so many possibilities from the movement and all of that stuff. Like it's just so good. Everything about it, the visuals, the sounds, everything just feels good. I want to play some more, but not just yet, because we got stuff coming up. Anywho's retro. <laughs> Excuse me. The last thing I'm going to talk about that we've been playing this week is uh, Dynamite Hitty. I gave that a shot. And apparently, the EU and Japanese versions of that game are way more fair, and the North American version is much, much harder because of randomness, and they've taken out a lot of content as well. 
but uh, they've added a lot of RNG and things to the point where I would die like consistently simply because they like there was this one boss on the tower that was so terrible that tower is a terrible boss fight it sucks simply because I could not find a pattern okay I am I'm not gonna say I'm a master at it but I'm known to look for and find patterns finding a pattern finding a pattern in that damn tower boss fight sucks ass because you can't and they randomized it and I didn't know that they randomized it until a good friend shout out to my a good friend hysteric moon <sighs> let me know that that game was made incredibly unfair and honestly it started off very good it started off very good but once they got to the point where they were doing like a bunch of dumb stuff and just making random things just throwing it at you I felt like the I lost the thread of what the the vision of the game design was it it, it like it, it lost its vision once you get to like stage what three or four and it's not that anymore once you start doing a bunch of shump sections I was like okay this this doesn't feel like the game anymore especially when I was doing a tower that tower was ridiculous there was a boss fight followed by another encounter into another mini boss into another encounter that was just ridiculous back to back to back to back to back I don't wanna I don't wanna I'm not confident in diving back into that so yeah screw that but yeah other than that yeah we played a little bit of Tinkle Tail I really do love that that's the difference between a game that's difficult for the right reasons and a game that's difficult for the wrong reasons and we got plenty of examples from this past week so game developers if you're curious of that balance go ahead and check out the channel because uh, there's a lot of things that you may be able to learn if you're interested in learning about these things. Anywho's, let's finally, finally, finally get into the news. All right. So, first thing on the docket, the Steam Deck um, it was going to offer replacement parts while partnering with uh, iFixit to do so. Steam Deck is on its way, it's getting ready to drop I believe and a lot of people have been testing. I think the embargo has lifted so that they can test everything that they can on it. Uh, Linus actually has a good video on it because um, the, for the first time I have to agree that he's testing these games and this hardware the proper way. And if you want to really test a game, I feel like you should do so via emulation. That's going to be the rawest, most best way to test the game's performance is via emulation especially if you want to test a uh, CPU and memory capability you want to test it via emulation but it, GPU um, although GPU utilization is not the biggest uh, how can I say requirement for any emulation I guess you could say a pre GameCube era yeah pre uh, GameCube and PS2 era most of that emulation is CPU based since uh, CPUs have became so, you know, I mean, uh, I guess you say boisterous and, and over overpowerful by comparison, but still, testing emulation on those later consoles, you know, via Dolphin, etc., or whatever it may be running, uh, is going to be key as well because seeing the GPU's use a lot, utilization in emulation will be very telling on what the Steam Deck would be capable of. So I can't wait to see more of that. And, um,. Yeah, all of this is not really relevant to the uh, to the docket, but I just wanted to mention it because these are things that have been happening in the past week. And if you want to see a good rundown on what the Steam Deck would be capable of, then I suggest you go ahead and check out that video by Linus. Not not that he needs any extra, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> uh, advertisement and whatnot, but, um, you know, facts is facts, and he did his job, he did his work. All right, next thing on the docket, IGN.com, unfortunately. Platinum Games leads criticize gaming companies nft motivations and single out konami so basically to run down this whole article um one of the best takes on the nft uh basically platinum uh heads um platinum heads At atsushi inaba and hideki kamiya uh basically stated and quote inaba said that the people who are trying to promote nfts and partner with gaming companies their conversations seem extremely one-sided Hey, you're going to make money, but how does it benefit the user or the creator? If I want to spend my time on something, I want it to benefit making good games. 
which I have to wholeheartedly agree. And how could anybody argue against that? Because honestly, the whole NFT uh, conversation just feels a bit, you know, lackluster and shady the way they talk about it. So we, we, we can't do we can't go through with that the way they're, you know, building it up. Sounds like a sales pitch that they don't want to tell you the full story about, you know, and who wants to pay that price? Anywho, next thing on the docket, NintendoEverything.com, Super Mario RPG director wants to make Super Mario RPG 2. And he pretty much said that he has some secret plans for a sequel in the story. Can't wait to see more. Would love to see more. And yeah, I approve. So yeah, go ahead and do that. I need to play that game. I haven't. But I've seen bits of it and I've been spoiled on it slightly. But that doesn't mean I can't play the full thing because I don't know everything about the game. So yeah, would love to play it eventually. And I'm going to get around to that. Can't wait. Respawn Station. Nintendo to shut down Wii U and 3DS eShops in 2023. It's RespawnStation.com article. And basically, this is something that had a lot of people pissed off for the past week. And since this was announced, uh, it basically just green lights emulation unless they make an alternative, you know, to to such a thing. Because their online uh, features, their uh, Nintendo Switch Plus online accounts that they have going on, the subscription-based account, unless they end up building this library to include all of the Nintendo classics, man, to to justify the pricing then who boy i mean yo what are y'all doing <laughs> like i ain't got nothing to worry about though and if you know you know but yeah this this is crazy ain't much to say about this but the fact that they're taking down all the wii u 3ds shops and that means every game that had virtual console which virtual console for those that don't know which was a means to play classic games from the game well not really gamecube but the n64 the super nintendo and the nes era of retro titles by nintendo and all these classes that people loved so much at the time these things were available through purchase in a legitimate fashion but now they're not available anymore once they uh shut it down in 23 so what are we going to do about that mm, well looks like we're going to be emulating you know, I can't can't really just stress that. I can't stress that enough. Anyway, same websites, Respawn Station, Take Two Interactive, and Netflix are partner on a Bioshock movie. Yeah, so Netflix is doing it again. We'll just have to see. But a Bioshock movie should be possible since the characters are real life characters. It's set in a real world setting, and you can use a little bit of props costume makeup in order to complete anything that's outside of the norm. Uh, within the game without breaking the immersion so they need to do this right like they shouldn't be able they, there should be no way to fumble this bag but we'll see I don't know what else to say but all in all yeah there you go it, it's a Bioshock Netflix uh, adaptation company anywho after 200 days employee group of better Ubisoft says none of its demands have been met over at VGC uh, also on the video games chronicle.com um, yeah, so to uh, sum it all up, Ubisoft had a bunch of uh, terrible work uh, conduct going on, and there's been a whole bunch of, like, you know, harassment, though in a discriminatory fashion and in a sexual fashion, but um, Ubisoft is uh, kind of on fire right now, kind of like the same way that Blizzard was. And they call themselves making a new sect or group that was supposed to be called a better Ubisoft in order to fix things. But they said 200 days have passed and not one thing has been fixed. <laughs> so it might have been just a PR move. Long story short, there was a list of demands that were announced February 14th, 2022. Which is basically, which I don't know why they would choose to do this on Valentine's Day, but uh, their key to the key of demands one through four uh, starts with number one: stop promoting and moving known offenders from studio to studio, team to team, with no repercussions. Number two: we need a collective seat at the table to have a meaningful say in how Ubisoft as a company moves forward from here. That's questionable because uh, I'm not sure who all uh, is asking to have that amount of say so. And uh, cross industry collaboration number three to agree on a set of ground rules and processes that all studios can use to handle these offenses in the future. 
And number four, this collaboration must heavily involve employees in non-management position and union representative. Basically, they want to know or be a part of what's going to happen or what could happen to them instead of just flying blind and also dealing with the stress of uh, things that are happening at the workplace. Honestly, if it is legitimately things that had to change and happen in the workplace, then cool. It needs to change, but um, we don't have enough of the details to know exactly what's going on. And I feel like those details should be handled. I feel like that's a little too simplistic to let that air sit like that. So I'm just saying, I'm going to just be honest here because it's the last docket of uh, the last item on the docket. And I'm just going to be real with you. You have to look at both sides, but not knowing, being on the outside looking in, I'm just going to be fair on both sides. If this is a work environment where people are actually doing what they need to do in order to get things done and they're not treated properly, then yeah, the company is on some bullshit and they need to be rectified. However, if this is also a uprising of a bunch of people who, and I'm not going to blame the, the workers, I'm not going to blame the workers. But I have had experience in a leadership role and in a leadership role at times you do get people who um, do not exactly have the proper work ethic, but they demand all of the handout and I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to cap. I'm not going to cap. I'm not going to see him cap. So I don't know how Ubisoft is working in detail and I don't know how the workers what they're going through or how they perform on a daily basis. But if they have to speak out like this, then something has to happen. Okay, it's got to be a problem going on. If it's this many of them that speaking up, then something's got to happen. You know, and I said all that to say that yes, there is room to have been for the doubt and really consider both sides. But these companies don't leave enough room because they're just sitting up, pumping out the same trash, running on the lowest, you know, setting and doing the least in order to get the most hell and at the end of the day if this keeps going then i'm gonna think that it must be some type of you know what i'm saying shell business or something it might be some type of front hell if i know i don't know but i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna be speculative like that's just it's nothing wrong with that i i, I have to be speculative anywho's yeah so with all that being said, y'all, make sure that y'all check out the stream. It was every day but Sundays and Mondays. Y'all know where we be at over on the Twitch. Go ahead and follow the Twitter so you can keep up with the latest news of what we've been doing, what we're keeping up with. Oh, shit. Wait a minute. I forgot. One more thing. So uh, the Capcom Pro Tour, uh, which was literally yesterday, Sunday, uh, and the Capcom Countdown. So the Capcom uh, Pro Tour was amazing. It was super fun and hella lit. Had a great time. Uh, Capcom, here's the thing. They have a whole thing set up for the Countdown for a week. And it was super exciting. And it turns out that, by the way, Daigo had an amazing set um, in the finals, the grand finals. Um... It was a great time. I won't go into detail because I don't keep up with Street Fighter V to that extent, but it is a good time. And Capcom's reveal at the end of the tournament was Street Fighter VI trailer. It was a teaser trailer for Street Fighter VI where there were uh, the characters Ryu and Luke were faced against each other in a dark room. And Ryu is fully bearded and aged and Luke, I don't know much about him, but he looks spry and ready to fight. So, can't wait to see more. However, we are going to have a good time coming very soon. I feel like there's some good stuff on the horizon out of Capcom. And there's a lot of people complaining about the fact that they didn't get any new Resident Evil, which I do feel bad for them. I understand. But I've been doing this video game thing for a long time all my life and when announcements happen and it's not what you expected It's it's okay. The pain will get easier over time You just gotta wait because eventually they're gonna announce the thing that you want and you're gonna be so happy I, I, I'm a mega fan. I'm a mega man devil may cry fan and it was a long time until we got what we wanted So understand that okay now 
All that being said, y'all, check out the teaser trailer for the Street Fighter 6 if you haven't seen it. It's actually pretty intense. And uh, yeah, on the horizon, if you are a fan of the fight games, then go ahead and uh, take a little trip to rewatch that Capcom Pro Tour because it was actually good. And yeah, I really do highly recommend that y'all check it out. Anywho, that being said, that's everything we need to be said. And I am out of here. So always remember the channel motto intentions are the most important. Action of the lot of words don't mean a damn thing. Y'all can't wait till we talk about the season finale euphoria. We need to hash it out and make it known. And also make sure that you take care of yourselves. I'm finna finally upload this tonight because <laughs> it's well into the evening. But um, we do what we can. It's a one-man show here, all right? And sometimes we end up restless. Y'all take care and peace. You know what? The the most fun. Ha 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 ha! No 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 no. Sir, oh god, sir, oh no, oh oh no, please, sir. Get a hold of yourself. Oh, Jesus. Boy, what the fuck going on in my game, bro? Why this type of shit happen when I be streaming, bro? <laughs> oh, he getting it. Blazing through this game. I mean, we could have been blazing better, but I mean, so... Oh! Oh! I should, I, I was supposed to keep the faith, Lord, and I did. But I did get weary and I apologize. Oh my God. Bro, we coming up on the final boss. You can't tell me shit. Run away. Try the gun? All right. I'm definitely gonna need to try it now because I don't like fighting you, dude. Jesus. Is he dead? Sweet fuck. Yo! Thank you. Okay. Fucking wow. All right. No. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Oh fuck. No, I didn't mean to do that. No.